Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. After many weeks of testing, I'm finally able to produce a video on raw acceleration types and how to optimize the settings to augment your aim. So this video is going to be about how to choose what's right for you. First though, I want to introduce two new types of video format for the channel. And the first one will be going through some of the questions asked in my Discord server. So I will be answering those in a monthly YouTube video. There is also another type of video format I want to bring to the channel, as I'm sure some of you are hoarding some very nice clips, and that's going to be a clip contest. I will be creating a space for people to submit their clips in my Discord server, and at the end of each month moving forward, I'll be watching through them on a live video where the best clip will be selected to win for certain prizes. To clarify, this is gaming clips and not aim training clips. And there is going to be three categories to start this off. And those are going to be funniest clip, luckiest clip, and most impressive clip. I am going live with this now, so if you want to participate, please join the Discord server using the link below this video and check out further information in there for submitting a clip, what prizes there are, and so on. Moving back on to acceleration, the very first thing to cover is that it is stated that it is most accurate when using 1600 dpi. The reason this is actually kind of crucial for any success with using acceleration is because there is enough dots or pixels available for the accelerated values to apply. This means there is a better representation of what's shown on the graph. It is most likely fine to use a lower dpi such as 800, but be aware that a small change in your motion could lead to chunkier changes, which contributes to inconsistency, and that can happen at any input count. Next, I want to cover the gain switch. Gain is different from sensitivity and refers to the change in relationship between the input and the output. Without the gain box ticked, you are using the top graph for your acceleration, which is sensitivity. This gives input multiplied by sensitivity equals the output. If you tick the game box, the bottom graph is activated and your acceleration settings apply to this section instead. Gain, according to Raw Excel, is a more correct way to represent a rate of acceleration, so ideally this option should be used. But there are some caveats that I'd like to cover. In my testing, I tried an 800 centimeter base setup, and I wanted to see if I could attain aiming at the smallest increments possible, and increase my acceleration for the longer distances. This is very extreme, and I realize now that this doesn't work, because the increments are actually too granular for what's required. Even though you can have godlike control, and you can aim around fine, relatively speaking, it's just too slow. So I noticed gain had a slightly different effect to considerably low sensitivity users than it does for mid to high range users. I'd say the considerably low is around 80 centimeters and lower, and mid to high range is around 50 centimeters and higher, where gain becomes much more viable to use. The main reason is that for considerably low sensitivity users, the flaw with gain is that this encourages use of higher speed physical movements to achieve the faster accelerations. The aim of Raw Excel for me in aim improvement is to reduce the usage of those higher speed physical movements to maintain and even improve consistency and reduce the aiming distances required. The only other workaround then for a considerably low sensitivity user that wants to use gain would be to introduce a very harsh acceleration rate and keep the input counts low. This then though will be hard to control precisely given the rate of change. Therefore, you could only really get away with using gain if you're already on a mid to high sensitivity base anyway. Here though, I'm just discussing most optimal setup. Not that somebody can't get good on a considerably low sense that is using gain. All that means is that they're gradually increasing their sensitivity output and 
by not hitting the higher accelerated regions at the lower input counts, they may also not be able to achieve all of their aiming requirements quickly, precisely, and comfortably. So this now creates an interesting range of setups across the board, which I deem to be hierarchical in terms of skill potential. First we have the static sense users, these are just flat sensitivity users. Then improving on that we have the hybrid acceleration setup. This is a given sensitivity user accelerating to an even higher sensitivity, keeping the input counts lower to achieve the same output results and improve consistency comfortably. And then we have the gain users. The reason I believe gain setups to be best is because it is more reflective of what you actually do. The faster you move, the more granularly the output will increase. It is driven by how much faster you move at each input count. And then the graph tells you how much further your mouse will move at each of these points. For sensitivity applied acceleration, there is more of a chunked behavior because the input value is flat multiplied by the accelerated sensitivity. So it doesn't account for how much faster you are moving at those stages. This sets us up nicely for setting up the curve shape and inputting the values because like just previously mentioned, a lot of this maps back to the physical velocity of how we aim as the aim in motion itself can also be described as an accelerated motion. This means our mouse movements don't immediately start at one speed and constantly travel at that speed. When you initially move your mouse, the speed starts off at some value and then it increases at different rates between all of us. I found the best acceleration curve shapes to be the ones that map the same journey of your physical velocity. Another way of saying this is that the acceleration should be used when you're actually accelerating yourself physically. Using my graph as an example, I'm using motivity gain here and I'm not that much of a snappy aimer for a bulk of my aiming interactions. Through testing, I came to these settings which are roughly accurate to how I actually aim. I physically aim slow at low input counts and get faster at the parts the graph accelerates. Comparing this to linear as an example, sensitivity increases with every input count. This is different from the motivity curve shape shown only for the initial and final stages of a physical aiming motion. In this linear graph, the parts that are normally faster in your aim are accelerated just as much as the slower parts. I believe this conflicts with a natural aim in motion because the velocity and input count at the low range and the higher range is subject to change considerably between each attempt. Therefore, you should not accelerate the inconsistency at either end indefinitely. This of course isn't saying don't use linear. If you have a snappier aim approach and you do have a fairly consistent acceleration throughout your aim in motion, then linear will be absolutely fine to use. I'll be focused on a motivity curve, however, because through testing, and I'll get on to the reasons why I've chosen this curve, I believe this one to be the better one out of the lot. Okay, so a little background on why I went for motivity. The reason was initially based off the Windows acceleration curve which I believe there must have been some study done to help users click targets of different distances. It has built-in points where it determines short range, mid range and long range, and accelerates more harshly as you reach these areas. The problem I had with this is that when I used it, because it didn't feel right, I would need to map the physical distance required to aim these input counts to determine what should govern my actual mapping of short mid and long range tags on screen, which meant I would have to learn into the new curve. Of course, with time, if you do ground out a curve that isn't suited to you, you will adapt and learn into it, so there's no harm done, generally speaking. 
depending on how harsh the change is and how well you adapt, it may even take considerable time. I've realized that finite points uh, or specific input counts to determine short, mid and long range targets was an issue and that a constant acceleration like the default linear also wasn't representative of our physical input velocity. So I needed a curve that satisfied all of these areas and hence I landed on the motivity curve. Now the shape I've gone for suits me. It's like a smooth and snappy hybrid, but definitely more on the slow side. Now motivity does reduce your base sensitivity. So if you don't want this, then there are also natural shapes that are similar and you can use that type to achieve an identical approach as this may represent your physical aiming velocity more accurately. So again, you could just simply continue with motivity and increase your base sensitivity slightly so that the dip doesn't feel too low. The next part is determining your physical velocity and this is the harder part. If you're typically a snappier aimer and you do actually snap a lot of the time, then you would argue that this is a bulk of your aim in motion. Therefore, the curve you would set also needs to be quite snappy. So if you're using motivity, then you'll need to experiment with a lower midpoint for this. A lower midpoint means the acceleration will kick in faster. If you typically accelerate as you aim and attempt to reduce the required stopping power and your motion is generally described as smooth, then you'll be wanting to use a slightly higher midpoint in your setup. Mine is quite high here as I notice just generally browsing around my monitors is at 10 input counts which I would also argue is considered a mid to long range distance. So this is where I wanted my main acceleration stages to kick in. The final part then is simply finding a rate of change that suits you. You do not want an acceleration that is so subtle it is barely noticeable. It will generally help, but due to the additional layer, there is more complexity in obtaining your desired output. That means you will feel like there is no acceleration when you aim and yet sometimes the results might differ because you aren't able to properly feel that component acting. Now slightly more feasible is the fast rate of change. You don't want an acceleration that is too harsh. Now that might actually be possible to learn and build up. Of course this will differ in all of us. But the idea there then is that you will need exactly precise input counts in order to determine the harshness of sensitivity desired. So, of course, like extreme precision is needed, or it could be a recipe for disaster, so to speak. So, it, again, it's fine to use, but it could be very difficult. So here, as you see, I've gone for 1.3, which is a 30% increase. This, to me, feels like a a relatively fine and manageable rate of change. Unfortunately, it is a lot of testing to find and feel how you aim, but once you get the settings, you'll just know. Everything will feel manageable, but it's not perfect as you'll need time to get used to the upper accel ranges, etc, etc. What I was hoping for while making this video was a graphical output of someone's input physical velocity. I came across a link here, which I'll put below this channel, but that's all I have to go off for now, which detects your input speed as you move the mouse, so you can try and determine what the values are at certain points in your aim. I'm working on something for this, however, so I'll post back when I have a seamless setup process. I genuinely think a curve can be obtained automatically for each person and we can eliminate all of this tedious and manual setups. Other than that, good luck for the eClip event and the next video will be boxing off the AIM series with one final link in video for an oversight of everything. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Nice. Over. You're dead! Ah. One enemy Your remaining.
enemy remaining. Clearing out. Trevor. What is the last player standing. Shutting them down. suppressed. Cancel. Shadow. Nick, 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 nice. Shut down. Defeated. One enemy remaining. It is done.